Welcome, hello everyone, and this is another Polymathy podcast, and this is going to be one of the first times I speak with some of these fine individuals here in the English language because they are, uh, well, they're mostly Italian, and uh, what is uh, amazing is that we're going to be exercising our language skills also in Latin today. Welcome, everyone. Let's meet the authors of this incredible project, which is Medei Daimones in the form of a graphic novel or a comic book. Now, uh, we have here today, we have uh, the, the architect of the Grand Affair, Francesco Vacca. Ciao, Francesco. How are you doing today? Hello, everyone. Thank you, Luke. And, and we have uh, the incredible uh, illustrator, who in fact is illustrating right now live for us, which is uh, amazing, Gabriele uh, Buttafuoco. How are you doing, Gabriele? Hi, everyone. Thanks for the hospitality. Oh, no, not at all. And th thanks for, for showing your amazing skills in real time. This is, this is amazing. And uh, we'll look at some more of that later as, as we uh, go along. And we have, we will have the author of the original Medei Daimones here, which is Stefano Vittori. Uh, he is, is on his way. He'll be here uh, uh, momentarily. And uh, of course, uh, Medei Daimones was the, and is the first tragedy fully written in Latin, in Latin verse in this century. And I don't know, in fact, how far back we have to go to actually find something that even even equals this, if not to Seneca himself. Uh, this is an incredible work that was performed by uh, the author Stefano Vittori himself, as well as Marina Garanin and Andrea Arezziani, who are both here with us today. How are you doing, Marina? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm waiting for Stefano. And <laughs> I will try to put my uh, LAN on my one moment. <laughs> my uh, two. Shut up my sure. Wi-Fi and to wait. Sure. And, yeah, uh, I'm still here. Am I here? You are here. You are here. I, I'm, I'm hearing you here. perfectly well. So. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I'm still and, here. Uh, you you are absolutely yes. here, and and we are excited Good. that you are here. Andrea, Fucking we're also excited that you're anymore. here. How are you doing? Hi, Luke. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm <laughs> very very excited and actually honored to be here on your Polymathy channel. Honori nobis est. It's our honor. I had it on my checklist. Uh, I hadn't been here yet. Oh my he gosh! Well, that, that's my fault. what? Really? Oh, the first time. Yeah. Well, we Scopi I... Martianus check. Right. check, but here no, never. That's right. Well, the last time we did something like this, we of course had Francesco here, and we spoke uh, in Italian, and because we discussed the first of the projects done by the New Base Corporation, not Corporation. I'm not sure the. Um, Corporation. Uh, the, 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 sure what, Nubes what comics. Type, the Nubes comics, yes. There's an incredible thing, which are graphic novels and comic books written entirely in Latin. The first one, which is uh, Origines Pictae. I don't know if you have a, uh, a picture somewhere, Francesco, that we could uh, throw up on the screen to show yes, that. Just a moment. Sure, if, if, if it's handy. Oh, good, a real, real copy. Even better. So the uh, this incredible group uh, is actually making I am comics the, the volume yeah, itself. Cool. oh i can't wait to see that oh that's i can't wait to have my copy in person fantastic amazing the first Aww. comic in, uh, in our line there you go. our new show us again Francesco. look at that Here it is beautiful and some of the pages oh well i love lots of red i like red very roman yeah Right. Beautiful. <laughs> Amazing. So what, uh, what the whole scope of this entire project, to those of, us, uh, those of uh, you out there who don't know, is basically to create some more Latin content. And uh, many of us uh, here, including Andrea and I on Nagyotertia Decima, Marina for years on her own channel, as well as Stefano, have been involved in creating uh, content in Latin. And this is really opening a new dimension entirely, which is the creation of graphic novels and comic books entirely in Latin, or at least with that are primarily in Latin. In the case of this one, Medai Daimones, this play, uh, which you can actually see the whole thing over on Stefano's channel, uh, Rumak, which I'll, I'll get open here in the meantime. You can actually see the whole play in Latin. There's English uh, subtitles, of course, which is, is convenient. Mm -hmm. The amazing thing here about it is that, uh, let's see if I can add this one. This is Medai Daimones. The, uh, the whole play um, is in Latin, of course, is all written in Latin verse. So if you want to get 
Uh, I mean, it's one, one, one way to get really good at a language you're studying is to study something that is captivating and interesting. And there's no better source for excellent Latin written in this century than, of course, Stefano Vittori's work. Uh, and let's see let me, if I can get the, uh, I want to show exactly where you can find that. So um, what we're, what I would, ex there's, there's uh, Gabriele working, working still on uh, one of these illustrations. So both the, much of the comic book is actually done. Can we see some of those images, Francesco, if you have any of them handy? Sure. So, and, ah, ecce, ecce homo. Ecco. Ecco. There we go. Welcome, Stefano. Here is the author of the AI Diamonds. Welcome, Stefano. Call me Deity Nebat. That that happens. Ah, kidit. No problem. Glad. Uh, yeah, very uh, glad I had this. Well. I had a meeting in school, and it uh, lasted more than expected. So it, okay, but now no, here. no, no problem. Happy to be here. So glad to have you, and so glad especially that you, of course, uh, wrote Medei Daimones, which is amazing. And uh, you, I believe you said a couple days ago when we recorded for Scorpio Martianus a similar interview, but that one was only in Latin. This one's in English to reach a wider audience. Um, you said you might even, if you feel like it, perform some of the lines from the play, since all three of the cast are here. And that's actually also amazing. This is a highly involved, very um, uh, a reasonably complex play and the fact that it's in by no means simplistic but carried out so well by the three of you what was that like Thank you. doing doing that <laughs> doing all these roles just the three of you amazing what should i say it was it was great because i love theater and i love latin and i love latin poetry and i love particularly stefano's latin poetry <laughs> <laughs> and i loved i loved the verses um, well, well, of course I love the words, what should I say? Um, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, uh, Stefan, you played more than one role, didn't you? Yeah, uh, I, I played um, yes the the, the second uh, the secondary role of uh, of Jason, uh, actually tertiary role of Jason because the the true deuteragonist of this play is uh, Creon. Um, so I played the role of Jason and of the two demons, mm. the the little one, the kid, and the and the and the, and the adolescent one, so to say. That's yeah. interesting. I was uh, back in back in the stage, and uh, the people didn't see me. Uh, people don't see me, and and I speak from back the stage. That's yeah, incredible. and what's most astonishing is that when he plays the demons, he plays them at once. So he basically has to shift from one. Higher pitch voice, the kid demon one, to a lower pitch voice, yeah. a darker yeah. voice, basically line after line, which is even more amazing. That is amazing. And here, by the way, if anyone wants to see the original plays, there are two versions here. This is the, the first one uh, that was in Italy and the one in Belgium, which is uh, <laughs> this one had to cut a half hour for uh for time but this is the whole version here so i do recommend you go see those the links are in the description but you uh, now instead of seeing the play which you absolutely should do and can do now you can in fact read the whole work because of course a play uh, a tragedy like this becomes an outstanding graphic novel francesco can you tell us a little bit about uh the the graphic novel which we're looking at now and how you ended up sure. transferring the work from stage to graphic novel um, as I already said in the um, Latin um, video, uh, my work was to translate, um, maintain the words by Stefano uh, and uh, show uh, what the, the words uh, were saying. There is a, um, a rule in the um, cinematography and in comics too, uh, there um, is a show, don't tell. So uh, if, if in theater, we tell the, the things in, um, in cinema, in um, TV series, or in comic books, we have to show. And so uh, it was the occasion to, to show to the readers uh, what the characters are just saying in, um, uh, on, on stage. And uh, in, um, in this page, for example, uh, we see Medea uh, speaking about um, Jason at um, Jason, <laughs> and we can see 
how she imagined him. Yeah. Put this in mind, Paul. Could you zoom in a little bit on uh, on the sure. uh, illustrations and the text? Yeah, the Latin text. Thank that's you. Me, that's helpful. That's me. Great. <laughs> or even and, and maybe Marina can yes. play this words. Yeah, yeah, maybe later. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Or even just a minute. Uh huh. Here, put up the. I want the, to choose uh, another page. Look at that! Wow, Gabriela, sure. this is amazing. Look at that! There's a there's ah, serpent. Graco, That's crazy. Graco. That's so cool. Incredible. Well, I mean, it, and it, what a what fortune to have so many uh, talented uh, people together. Because one thing to have all of the written words and the text, and thankfully. Um, Stefano also is an outstanding actor, and he has Marina and Andrea also to act with. So it was an incredible stage play. But to see it like this, so um, with professional comic book or graphic novel illustrators and uh, designers, Francesca, what is um, uh, how would you describe your role? Shenographer, is that correct for this? Uh, script writer. Script writer. Script writer. Okay. Oh, yeah. Script yeah. writer. Stri the same as uh, for, the, for the TV series. Uh, yeah, um, right. because uh, uh, generally a scriptwriter wrote the dialogue at, uh, <laughs> and the, the scene, uh, describe what the illustrator will, um, will draw. Mm, um, that's right. I was saying... Look at the uh, Argonauts. <laughs> here it is, um, a page... Uh, um, where we can see uh, uh, not just what happened now, but uh, what happened before, um, where uh, Medea and uh, Yazon speak about uh, about the past, about the, um, uh, the voyage of the Argonauts, we can uh, really see them. And mm. here it are. Yeah. Here they are. Oh, the one is big. The, 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 there's a big one. Is that Hercules? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. Uh... <laughs> and, uh... Did you, uh, Gabriele, did you lion. choose uh, the appearance of each of the heroes of the Argonauts? Hercules, I can identify, as well as Jason. Um, yes, sort of. Uh, I was inspired by the classical appearance of the heroes, but I also had um, some sort of uh, creative freedom to choose how they were like. But mm -hmm. um, instead, I um, had to inspire from the actors, from Stefano and Marina and Alessandro, um, to uh, insert them in the, in the comic and to portray them somewhat accurately. Mm. Oh, indeed. Fantastic. Well, I want to talk a little uh, to you in great detail today, uh, if we can, about your illustration and the process you go through, Gabriele, to create this incredible artwork. Uh, what I'd like to ask uh, of uh, you, Francesca, right now, if you could tell us a, a, a bit about, so this, this is a comic book that, this is a graphic novel, indeed, because 100 pages, it's long. Uh, I, I like calling things like that gr graphic novels. It sounds more, more I don't know, more important somehow. It seems important. I think there is a, really there is a debate on that, uh, really? uh, on the term graphic novel and comic, because they are, they are the same thing. But uh, if we say comic book, it's in a, a child thing. We say oh, yeah. graphic novel, wow, it's uh, something for an yeah. adult public, but yeah, really are the same thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and I no. find that interesting, too, that uh, it's also true, actually, in, at least yeah. in I can speak being American uh, for American culture with respect to these things that, yeah, comic books are definitely seen as something more like children, adolescent and also cartoons, um, animated movies and things like that, which is one of the reasons yeah. that that Dizzy's been making all these, you know, live action things because they think that, oh, well, adults can feel OK. But think oh, of the yeah, Japanese, yeah. the Japanese, they as adults, read, of course, uh, graphic novels or comic books that are very well written as well as watch extremely uh, well written and well designed television shows that are all entirely animated. So we hope this is yet another important thing that that you are doing for our culture as Latin speakers, as Latin readers, all of you at, uh, at Moonbase, making uh, making 
making this a, obviously a wonderful and appropriate thing for all of us to do, especially if you want to read really good Latin. And Stefan, I want to ask you uh, uh, in detail about um, about your process and how you uh, you wrote this. Briefly, uh, Francesco, can you tell us a little bit about the, the Kickstarter that I, I wanted to uh, um, understand sure, that better? Because the book doesn't that. isn't complete yet, and there's a point to that. Can you tell us some more? It's almost completed. In fact, you can see uh, this page, for example, is already ink, is already almost colored, but the final pages will be like this or Ooh. this, full mm. color with wow. uh, lights and shadows. And uh, right now we are doing the Kickstarter campaign. We are uh, a bit over uh, the middle point and uh, you can uh, find it on um, Kickstarter. Uh, mm -hmm. Links in the description uh, we, as well for everyone. Yeah, thank you. We already uh, reached the goal. So the book will be printed and uh, sent to all our bakers. But we are uh, looking to, to spread the word uh, mm -hmm. more, even because we are we try to, to put a stretch goal now. Uh, uh, if, uh, if we reach 10,000 euros, uh, we'll be doing um, a, an audiobook. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the bakers uh, will be able to read, watch the images, and uh, at the same time, non è stato ascoltare. Yeah, heard. Listen, yeah, that's right. Heard. Yeah, uh, we sometimes the Latin words uh, mix in my mind with English oh, words. Oh, leak it. Uh, I'm sorry. Ali quote verba latina, some Latin words, no problem. We, we've... Uh... Uh, which, which is fine. And Italian. <laughs> Italiano, no problem. Um, if, even Georgian, should it occur, we can have that as well. Uh, as we actually do with the text, but, uh, which I want to talk about. We've got to talk to So we're, we're circling back to that. But th everyone out there, this is a big deal. Now, I want this audiobook recited by the three amazing actors uh, here who are all fluent Latin speakers. Andrea yeah. Luciani, Stefano Vittorio, Marina Garani. And I want this audiobook. So I'm asking you, I already made, did my part, amazing, already contributed yeah. to the project. I want this audiobook. So, so please help them get past the 10,000 marks so that, that, I, that we could all get the audiobook because I, I really want it. So I can yeah. read it and listen to it. Uh, the, a, the audio and the videos. Be, go ahead. Make you happy. Uh, please me, ma please uh, make me happy because they'll, they'll do a, a nice professional goal. audio we'll recording be... I, and I want to be able to hear them. Hear the verses, hear the rhythms. Hmm. Uh, uh, I was just adding that uh, as, a stretch, uh, as a stretch goal, the audiobook will be free for every baker. So we, if we reach 10,000 euros, uh, every baker will have the, the audiobook in well, addition that's... to all the pledges. Well, that is a huge deal. That is a huge deal. And I, I really hope that that uh, you get there sooner than later because I badly re uh, I require I my 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 blood and my body the, require the having the, the audiobook recited by by the three amazing people here and uh, so that is actually what I'd like to talk about uh, now actually wow wait a minute look at this look Gabriele is designing oh. now he's been just, just you. drawing in the background this is a true artist he, if he's that's always me. That's me. Yeah. illustrating and doodling yep that's and, nice. and that's so impressive. Okay. In a um, in a few minutes, Gab uh, Gabriele, I want to ask you about how you uh, you designed each of these characters. Of course, they look a lot like uh, the the actors, but you also made some small changes and things like that. Uh, having a father who is an artist, I deeply admire artwork of any kind, especially made with such talent such as yours. So, uh, I definitely uh, want to know Thanks. more about how you. Uh, you do all of this. Stefano, uh, you, of course, wrote Medeai Daimones. And uh, yes. I always like hearing the story of how you got the idea uh, to do this. Could you tell us now? Yes, of course. So uh, it was, um, I, I think, beginning of fall of 21, mm. uh, 2021. Um, and I was writing in Italian, not in verses, uh, in prose. Uh, some free thoughts of my mind, of, of, my, of my mind about Medea, uh, and I asked, and I yes, I asked to myself, I asked myself, how would she feel 
um, short after being uh, left by Jason, and I imagined um, spontaneously the scene in which they uh, go out, uh, goes house uh, goes out of uh, of her house and is in a, in a in a square where there is this uh, noon deny this uh, market mm, market yeah. it, it is yeah. a marketplace and uh, i began to imagine her thoughts about jason about herself and in that situation so i i wrote this scene in which uh, she spoke about the um, for example the merchandise the things uh, jason would have needed and she asked uh, she asked asks herself to uh, uh, what he what her uh, jason would need if he uh, if he was if he was there um and then she sees this wall and uh, and thinks i want to be in a place where a wall or a street can be a place, uh, can be a wall or a street which can be touched by you, by by Jason. And if you drive me away from the city, from this place, I will be in another place. And my biggest uh, sorrow won't be the simple fact that we are not together anymore, but the fact that I cannot share my reality with you. I cannot share my sky, my marketplaces, my needings. Uh, my food, my streets, my walls with you. I cannot share my life with you. And in this case, it doesn't matter so much that I, that I am with you or not with you anymore. The most important thing, the most uh, painful thing is that our worlds, mine and yours, will be separated forever. And this was the, the thing, the, the thought mm. at the base of this piece. I wrote it down in, in Italian and in prose. I uh, read this piece to Marina, uh, an evening, uh, in um, Che Babbaro. Uh, well, the, um, the Che Babbaro <laughs> is a place where they sell kebab. Duna. Uh, Duna. It's also in Latin. <laughs> che Babarius. And, and in Latin is Che Babarius. <laughs> uh, because, of course, uh, the Arabic word kebab, kebab, has, uh, kebab has a long A, so in Latin is kebab, uh, ex classe nulla, uh, in, in, <laughs> class, in nominal class zero, and uh, the, 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 the name of the job is kebab arius. And, and here we are very sensitive to vowel length. Yes, we are. Word. Yes, As we ought to be, especially so with We take it with very such... personally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I so I, we ahead. were in this at this at this kebab place. I don't know in, in this kebab baro, uh -huh. and I read this piece to this, this little this, this short piece in Italian prose to Marina. She liked it so much that she said, "Wrote uh, write, uh, please write the entire uh, tragedy." <laughs> so I was laughing, but uh, after two or three days, we. Uh, Mm, discovered we discovered uh, while scrolling on instagram that there was actually uh, a kertamen a contest of original latin theater which would be uh, had uh, hold held which would be held mm -hmm. in summer in the following summer so we said e each other okay we have um, six seven eight mm -hmm. months mm -hmm to complete it. So I used all my free, uh, almost all my free time to, uh, write it, uh, to write it down in uh, Latin and in three meters. But uh, the, that first uh, piece, which is the, the, the scene in which Medea is in the, uh, is in the marketplace, uh, that is a song. Uh, so there is this wonderful uh, music written by Marina uh which had some words but uh, they were not uh so to say the the final ones and mm, it had german words i uh, yes. i think yes uh the music was so beautiful that this this part in which medea is in the in the marketplace originally i had thought to be a, re a racist so um a prose 
in um, so a, a, a discourse, so to say, uh, she simply talks in three meters. But then I uh, one evening she was uh, playing this beautiful song with her guitar, and then I told them, I told her, uh, please allow me to use this song, to use this music for that, uh, media, for those Medea's words, which were the, the first words of this play, of this piece. Uh, and, and, so, uh, and so the first song uh, is born. And for me, it was uh, um, invita Invitato a Nozze. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Italian, we say to me Inviti a Nozze, to say you are asking me uh, to do something that, that, that I would, would like to do spontaneously and without invitation. Oh. Uh, so something very... Oh. very, well, very uh, well, yes. well, I want to ask you in a second. All the pieces... Uh, uh, all, oh, oh. <laughs> so all the pieces, all, uh, all the plays, uh, all the, all the pieces uh, is born from this song, from this... Uh, so to say, monologue. It's a monologue uh, of Medea uh, with herself. That's well. That's fantastic. Well, I want to ask more about uh, the the structure and the rhythm, and also the fact that you'll be teaching for certain uh, people in the Kickstarter meter class, Latin recitation and meter class, which I want to talk about. Andrea, I was wondering if you could do our audience a favor because not everybody knows the story of Jason and Medea. Could you give us the one or two minute version of what happens and with Jason Medea, who these mythological characters are? Are you you're really asking me that I'm the less educated person in the room? <laughs> well, I'm I'm quite confident you know who Crayon is and you know, <laughs> you know who Crea Crayon is. Yeah, okay. Crayon, yeah. what is it in English? I'll just I'll say Crayon for Crayon. now. Crayon. Crayon sounds like like uh, those things you write with. Uh, go ahead, Andrea. So wh more or less, who who is Jason? Um, who are the Argonauts and who is Medea and how did they meet? Okay, so in super short, the Argonauts were a group, a band of heroes that uh, in the actually archaic period, even before the Trojan War, uh, they sail and accompany Jason to the Colchis, which is, let's say, contemporary Georgia, this mythical land, in, uh, in order to find the, the uh, I think you call it Golden Fleece, Maybe mm -hmm. of, yep. uh, the gold, the gold skin. Okay, so they sail with the the Argonauts <laughs> are called uh, like that after the ship with which they sail, which is Argo. That comes after the name of the I think the builder, which is uh, either Argo or Argus, and uh, they of course have to solve a series of challenges, uh, some of which are particularly, uh, I'd say, prove particularly challenging. And the young uh, the young Medea that uh, Jason and the Argonauts meet in, Col uh, in Colchis, and which is the son, uh, the daughter of, uh, help me with the names, guys. I say, I said that I'm educated. She's the daughter of, uh, of, of Aietes, thanks. I was about to say Belial, but you said Aietes. Aietes, ah. okay, the son of Aietes. She falls, Aietes. Med <laughs> she falls madly in love with Jason, and she's, she's a very powerful, Although young, which uh, with her arts, she uh, with ma magic arts, she manages to actually secure the path of Jason to the Golden Fleece. Mm. And uh, we might actually um, quote a few examples of what she does, but maybe we can recite them later because there is a part Ooh. where Creon speaks with Jason and explains how powerful Medea is through the specific actions that uh, the enchantments that Medea. Uh, enacted in order to uh, allow uh, the Argonauts to recover the Golden Fleece, but maybe we, we can talk about that in more in detail later. And uh, Jason and Medea uh, come back uh, uh, to Greece after recovering, uh, um, technically they marry, and after recovering the Golden mm -hmm. Fleece, they come back. This is where the problems arise, because uh, uh, until that, it's a beautiful story of love, uh, heroism, and, uh, and challenges. But of course, our uh, fantastic J uh, Jason uh, arrives in Corinth and immediately started losing interest in, uh, in Medea. 
for a variety of reasons. Then uh, maybe uh, Stefano can give, uh, give us his uh, also view because as there is a very contemporary view that Stefano gives in display uh, also in the relationship between men and women. While losing interest in Medea, um, J uh, Jason uh, puts his eyes on the daughter of uh, King Creon of Corinth. Creon is not the same Creon uh, of, uh, I think, uh, maybe Ateocles and Polyni and Polynikes. Yeah, it's yeah, no, it's, it's, it's not it's the same. same. It's just a case of, exactly, of a, yes. of a, of a monomy. And uh, Cre Creon has a, <clears throat> as a, an only daughter, Creusa, and of course, this is the occasion of uh, uh, having her marry with, with a hero. Okay. <clears throat> but Medea, of course, uh, and then this is where also the versions of the story differ, and also uh, where there is the originality and uniqueness of uh, uh, this contemporary masterpiece that Stefano wrote. Um, in, in, in one of the traditional uh, stories, no, Medea arrives to kill her own uh, sons that she had uh, with Jason and uh, basically kill... Uh, uh, Jason itself, I guess, and uh, and Creon. We will see what happens. Maybe we shouldn't spoil it in the story that actually um, our Stefano crafted. This is more or less the story. So it's a story of love, but it's also a story of power because there are two powerful, three powerful characters: a hero, Jason, so the sta the standard traditional uh, moral power, the magic and obscure and foreign power that is Medea, and then there is the traditional hierarchy can put it in the power of this crayon. And this, the clash of interest among these three powers is, uh, I think, where the story, uh, at least the main plot lies. Mm, that's good. The clash of three kinds of yes, power. Yes, the, uh, Political the, power the, in Creon, uh, political power in Medea, and heroic power in Jason. That's very interesting. Spontaneously, he did that. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yes. Well, I knew he could yeah. do it. So there are these, there are these, three, uh, these three powers. <laughs> Um, which uh, which clash uh, with one another. Uh, this is something. Th this is something which happens also with Seneca and with Euripides. With this particular difference that in uh, in Euripides and Seneca's uh, works, the the two powers which so uh, two of these three powers uh, co uh, coalesce against one power, which is Medea. Um, Medea as a woman, Medea as a barbarian, Medea as a, as a, Medea as a foreigner, and also Medea as a witch. So um, at an irrational, irrational power, which is against the Weltanschauung of Greeks, which are, uh, so to say, irrational uh, people, the, uh, the people who um, developed uh, geometry, Mathematics, arithmetics, at its most, right. the the people who uh, the who invented the Milesian uh, structure of the city, uh, the the one with the, the Cardo and the the Cumanus, uh, the people who is the democracy, the the yes, the reason, uh, the I would say the most illuministic people of uh, ancient world. And Medea is exactly the, the nemesis of, of all these values. Uh, Greeks were um, massively, <laughs> it was crazily, um, uh, so to, uh, how to say, mas masculista, uh, patriarchal. Um, um, misogynist. Uh, or no, no, they were not sexist. misogynist, but they were masculisti in Italian. They loved men. Is, uh, but they were but the word Men, sexist, I think you can say generic. Sexist would probably be the best. Well, but sexism, uh, 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 let, let's say patriarchal. Machismo? Patriarchal, maybe, yeah. Let, let's say Patriarchal. patriarchal. Sure. Let's say patriarchal. And Medea is a woman. They were rationalists, and Medea is a witch, and so on. So uh, you see this uh, crayon of Euripides and this crayon of Seneca who share this particular trait which... Uh, which always, so to say, amazed me in a negative sense. They are very, very um, self-confident against this powerful witch. Uh, right. no. Also, no. if they perfectly know that she is a very, very powerful witch. Yes. So they, both in Euripides and in Seneca, they are so uh, arrogant 
with this very powerful woman and I was uh, reading this uh, Euripides and Seneca's works and I always uh, asked myself but how they can how do how can they uh, treat uh, this woman in this way how it's possible that they don't expect uh, a revenge from yeah, such Creon a powerful person also, Creon of Euripides says says Dedoikase. so he says I'm afraid of yes you. I'm afraid of you but then she acts uh, as if uh, he acts he uh, Creon acts as if he uh, were at, at all uh, were afraid of her at all yes he just says that so he says Dedoikase. Uh, yes of course this is very true what you say he says Dedoikase. I'm afraid of you but then he acts as as if she uh, was totally weak um, and it's very arrogant uh, against her. Uh, in my version, um, because you were asking about the structure, in mm -hmm. <clears throat> so my version is based and, and its structure is based on this on this question I asked myself. So, how would a real crayon in modern times? with modern values act with Medea. Because actually, uh, yes, the central, the, central the central character of my tragedy is Medea, of course. But Creon is almost at the same level of centrality with Medea. Because my question was, how would a modern, poli a modern politician, um, a skillful, modern politician act in this same situation with a po with a powerful and foreigner woman and a hero who in that precise time is useful for him only as a as a husband for her daughter mm -hmm. this is the the first pillar of the structure the behavior of creon and the second one Medea and uh, Medea and also Jason never tell the names of uh, of their sons of their children in both Euripides and Seneca's works, which my, is something, yeah, 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 yeah which is something she noted. Uh, she noticed the fact that in Euripides and in Seneca, uh, the name of the children of Medea's children are never told. So I began to uh, to imagine uh, an alternative plot, which could just justify the absence of of Medea's children's names in these two authors' works, uh, and uh, and the answer is demons. In uh, in ancient cultures uh, like Egyptian one and many other Mediterranean ancient cultures. The demons, like the gods, have many names, and at the same time, they can have no name or mm -hmm. non-existing names. In uh, an Egyptian papyrus, you have all the names of Apophis, which exist, and all the names of Apophis, which don't exist. So you are scrolling the papyrus, and you see all the names of Apophis, this very important Egyptian demon, and then the the list of names ends and there is another list of names with the title list uh, list of the names of apophis which don't exist and you then read these names as if they existed yeah. but mm -hmm. they don't exist so the demons are something between the real world and the unreal world so they have uh, they in the same time exist and don't exist and their names also exist and don't exist so the, the answer to this question was, for us, of course, well, maybe Medea's sons are demons and only she, she's, she's the one, she's the soul who can, speaks, who, can, who can speak with them. Yes, Harry Potter can speak to snakes. Yes, right. <laughs> yes of course. There, there's a snake. <laughs> and this is the second pillar of the, um, yes, of the of our work that's, the structure is that is the same of the tragedies so you have basically stasimoi so some parts with uh, recitative parts in which the actors uh, simply speak and speak in three meters and uh, songs we have actually three 
uh, songs, among right. which one is an exorcism in more languages. Well, uh, uh, about the songs, uh, maybe we can uh, show the trailer in which there is a, a small uh, piece of uh, the song itself. Sure. Let's. Uh, I, here we go. Let's see if um, that loads, Francesco. And uh, if you, you shared with audio, then you should be able to transmit the audio to us. Uh, we actually we don't have any image at all. I don't think on screen here, Francesco. Um, the voice was Marina, I guess. It was live. Oh, it was me. <laughs> yes, she's my really uh, singer. Yeah. It does look like uh, we. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Now it's working. Now go ahead. Begin. Is there a problem with the trailer? Uh, until this very moment. But go ahead, play again. Oh, I'm sorry. Try to I still have a problem with the connection, the maybe. Beginning. Okay, now it's working. Amor è nato, mulierint ret virum, feruntur animae copulam supra novam. Manent silentes, ortus uddetur sibi. Tu vana, quae delira, delira e partanza e venicis, hae croga curtesera. In uno regna pollea duo, graecisque barbarisque, quis corintis, a castus, aetesve, copia saget, si vis tua, proprio in me abbellabito. And of course, the song. Um, Thank you. Know, you. Co composition and so beautifully sung. And like I, I told you um, before, it, it um, reminds me, I, I don't know, it reminds me like um, I, I hear things I like, which I like, like uh, Anna German and also uh, Danny Elfman. I hear. Oh, <laughs> I don't know them. I have to write that down. Are there songwriters or who's that singing? Uh, yeah, Anna German was a uh, singer in the Soviet Union and. Um, uh, Danny Elfman, of course, uh, reminds me a bit of Sally's song. Just, just little, little bits that might be ah, associated oh, with, of course, with Stefano and Stefano and I have been working on the uh, the night before Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Songs, but so uh, anyway, just such a wonderful so song. So I mean, just so perfect and and you know the um, melancholy of uh, of the melody and especially your performance. I mean, it's uh, I don't think I've watched it a single time without tears coming to my own eyes and I know really? that many other people watching and I always and... wanted that when I was writing songs when I was little I always wanted to make people cry well well you did you did <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I add myself to the count of the criers because actually especially Unum Superius for me was uh, very particularly <laughs> oh, yeah. strong thank the... you Oh, they're well. They're the remarkable. The last song, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. The last song is the uh, is oh, the yeah. one uh, whose title is Unum Superius, in which Medea speaks about a star, a, a dying star, which in uh, in her death uh, explodes, like many stars explode in uh, in dying. So uh, it uh, gifted all the planets with her light for millennium, for millions or or billions of years. And she didn't receive anything uh, from those planets. So at the at the very end of its ex existence, she punishes them not by denying her gifts, but by exaggerating mm. its gifts. So its gifts. So mm. the star inundates the planets with too much mm. energy, and mm -hmm. then. And and then she dies, and and then 
and and so she dies and so she uh, so somehow revenges uh, herself from this ingratitude hmm. Bella Doca. Mm -hmm. I've goosebumps just okay. just thinking about that oh it's so great uh, I want to talk uh, to all three of, of you as, as actors and ask you about the performance and all that in, in a second but Gabriele you have been illustrating this whole time uh, mm -hmm. if for us yeah. which is quite a treat because uh, uh, I, I don't know how much artists realize that we non-illustrators adore watching an artist of your talent and, and skill do this in front of our very eyes. So thank you for, for uh, doing this. Look, there's Jason in the form of Stefano. And, and there's a, a snake, which is great, which works also well for Stefano's uh, affection for Egypt. Gabriele, uh, could you tell us uh, what you did to create the illustrations? Uh, yeah, so um, I started designing the characters that uh, were based off the actors. Um, so um, starting from that, uh, there was uh, already a challenge because classically um, Jason is uh, represented as usually with um, a beard or uh, with um, um, blonde hair. Uh, in fact, uh, um, we tried to um, lighten the, um, the hair uh, to make him sort of blonde, but um, we tried to find a certain balance uh, between the likeness with the uh, actor and the accuracy, historical accuracy. Uh, so there were certain challenges in this regard. Um, also, uh, with the um, character portrayed by Andrea um, Crayon, uh, he was uh, much older than Andrea, so uh, I had to um, make him like he looked uh, older, but also resembled a little Andrea. So uh, there were certain challenges. Francesco, um, potresti condividere then... di nuovo le, uh, il PDF? It could show us again uh, the PDF so we can see some of the illustrations uh, that are finished by Gabriele. Uh, go ahead, Gabriele. So you said you, you of course, uh, made... Yeah. Um, so Crayon is naturally based on the appearance of Andrea, like the other characters, but you made him look older. I hope I yeah. age like Crayon. So, uh, because it's a beautiful uh, Crayon. <laughs> Yeah, so um, another challenge was uh, inserting the um, uh, text in the story because uh, being that um, Greek tragedy, there is a lot of talking and uh, a lot of monologues. So um, sometimes that was a challenge in the um, context of, the, of a comic book because um, often the comic book structure is based on uh, finding the balance between uh, um, uh, te text and images. So sometimes that was challenging, but also um, a fun experience because uh, you can find certain solutions that work uh, better uh, with the addition of certain balloons in certain position. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. Mm. So you arrange the position of the balloons as well as the illustrator? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was the I main was, challenge, uh, actually. It was a challenge because uh, sometimes the, the texts were, were um, very, very long. And uh, we also tried to maintain the, the verse yeah. intact. And so sometimes mm -hmm. the balloons are, are huge. But, Could, uh, I, I actually like really that. Like... Could you show us, Francesco, one of those lo long ones where you have the, the large balloon? Sure. Um, the large word uh, cloud, yeah, that that's one. Now, this what... one is uh, is large for the um, for a comic. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually, um, when I write the the story, the complete story, uh, the rule is uh, um, to avoid uh, speeches longer than two lines. In this mm. case, we have <laughs> a lot of lines, but mm. it's uh, well... it's a particular comic, and there are other cases. Yeah, find a find example. a long one because I actually want to compliment you on how you, how you did these. Because long the uh, 
Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So these but, are uh, very, very long. <laughs> but but for, 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 us, for the standard balloon. Exactly. But I think what, why this still works so well is because fundamentally your audience, who are we, who want to read Latin, who may even like to speak or recite Latin aloud, we want to immerse ourselves in language. Still, a, a page, a blank white page with uh, black letters on it can still be intimidating, especially when written by Stefano Vittori uh, in his uh, in incredible uh, use of diction and uh, vocabulary and, of course, a verse which might be might be a little intimidating to a, to a lot of people. But here there is nothing more welcoming than these beautiful illustrations that make instantly clear, as any good comic book should, exactly what's going on. So this gives us the opportunity as readers to enjoy the written word in a new dimension. The stage play is is what it was designed to do. But fundamentally, it's a written thing that that someone, Stefano Vittori, had to write down. And here we get to immediately understand it, see what's going on. Like I see, I see Medea there. She looks, she looks pretty upset, and she's got two things yeah. on two sides. So there's conflict, and and she's saying all uh, these things. This gives us the chance, because when we, as readers in our native languages. We want to read something quickly because we've been reading for 20 years, exactly. 30 years, 40 years, depending how old we are. And so when we have in bubbles like this, though, with these beautiful images, it makes us want to linger on the page and take our time reading mm -hmm. each word. And since the words are so carefully selected in poetry, and since we know Stefano put so much attention into this, we get to enjoy them in a different way and that much better. So I, I, I couldn't be more excited to have this in my hands. When are exactly. we getting this, Francesco? When am I getting my copy that, I, that I've that i pre-ordered? Officially, we are getting it, you are getting it in uh, December. By Christmas, yeah. Uh, but, but, uh, by Christmas, but maybe a little bit earlier. We are not sure, but uh, we are doing uh, our best to deliver it um, a little bit early. Well, but for Christmas, love... everyone will have the comic. Oh, Good. Uh, maybe a time for Black Friday. Well, I, yeah. um, being so, so attached to my friends, these inc who are incredible actors as well, which I got to observe with my own eyes, I, was ho I would have only have hoped that they would look like you three do. Was there any doubt in your minds, Francesco and Gabriele, that you would have used the appearances of Andrea Maria and Stefano in the comic book? Um... To me, it was a, it wasn't a problem. Um, it was a, a part of the of the experience of writing uh, this uh, adaptation. Uh, I had in mind uh, um, not just uh, Jason, Medea, and Creon, but uh, Jason, Medea, and Creon as portrayed by Stefano, Marina, and Andrea. So it was. Uh, natural thinking to have them look like that. Maybe it was a, a little challenge to, to Gabriele uh, because um, had to, uh, in some way, uh, uh, unify the, um, the actors and, uh, and what really works on paper. Mm. Is, uh, is it so, Gabriele? Yes, um, as I said, uh, maybe I had to try to find a um, synthesis between the style used in the comic books that is uh, sort of um, cartoonish in a way. And so I had to imagine them uh, as the character uh, and to make them recognizable, but also uh, trying to fit them into the the comic book style that I used. So maybe, yes, that was the only challenge, but they look like they are perfect in their parts. <laughs> they, they really do. And I love, too, the, uh, of course, I recognize the purple dress from the second uh, stage performance in Belgium that Medea is wearing, for example. I mean, it just, it looks like you, you created, I don't know, I just... Um, I enjoy the the different ways of realizing something like this, a work of, of fiction or otherwise in different forms. And uh, I don't know, I just I couldn't be more excited. Maybe I can't find the right words to express exactly how 
how I feel, but it's a really excited and uh, amazing. Ooh, this is cool to see it even in even in black and white. It looks fantastic. This is wow, that's cool. Yeah, oh, yeah I recognize this scene. Very good to see. Yeah, that's cool. I I like that too. Well, um, I want to ask now the actors who are all three of them here, um, what it was, what what this was like. Um, uh, Andrea, what it was 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 your experience bringing this character, mythological but written by Stefano, to the stage? Well, I have to say that was a. Uh... Uh, first, I was hugely honored to have been chosen by Stefano, also because I had to, uh, let's say, measure my, mm, measure my skill in reciting verse in Latin with quantities. And, uh, and basically, in the maybe months or the couple years before the performance, after meeting you, Luke, and uh, then through you, Stefano and Marina, I have basically had been relearning Latin, no? Through... Uh, learning actually how to uh, to pronounce quantities, and for me that was really uh, from the technical, from the linguistic point of view, uh, uh, just by itself an amazing experience, an amazing uh, uh, let's say uh, way to put my uh, to try you know my the skills that I had acquired. And second of all, uh, very interesting, Stefano managed to craft a character that uh, more or less match my personality uh, <laughs> for a variety of reasons. Actually, this also comes from uh, lots of political uh, debates that we have uh, uh, all the time uh, with Stefano. Uh, you, you can watch a few of them also in Latin, actually, in his channel, Rumak, and mm -hmm. probably we will be doing more in the That's future. Nice. And uh, especially, mostly, my the accusation of Stefano of me being a... Uh, 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 let's say an insensitive, merciless capitalist, uh, or two you're a soulless capitalist, <laughs> soulless capitalist. And uh, it, so, he, Stefano, uh, he amazingly put everything, all of that, into crayon, and this helped me a lot in uh, actually making the character mine. Because who's crayon? Crayon, you can see it as the only really rational, and you can also say you might make the case that this is the only soulless part of the tragedy. But, and, and it's the real, the real contemporary character that actually tries to basically create a, a common market, a, let's say a common great imperialist market uh, in the Mediterranean and, uh, uh, and Georgia. There is a beautiful scene where basically Creon uh, explains his uh, uh, mad dream of a basically uh, let's say archaic globalization, where you could uh, send uh, um, resources and and goods from Colchis to Greece, from uh, India to Persia, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, so, actually, for me, uh, it was relatively easy to embody this character because uh, uh, I knew what was uh, what 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 moved Stefan in writing it, and it really matched my personality. So I had to just uh, exaggerate or imaginate, let's say, uh, okay, a more merciless, older and uh, vintage me, let's say, <laughs> that, uh, and, uh, and, I, and I really believe that, uh, I mean, if you think about it very coldly, you, you could make Creon's case. What, what does Creon say? Uh, Creon says, okay, Medea, uh, Jason is an idiot. He doesn't love you anymore. Okay. You are one of the most powerful witches in the world. So, why don't you start, just abandon him, leave it with my normie daughter and start working with me? So I gain a husband, which means I just gain, I just gain uh, semen, which is actually the word that Cleon uses for Jason. And I also gain a huge ally that would rule the world and the market, the common market with me. And if you think about it, it will make perfect sense if you didn't consider love in the equation. What Creon fails to see, because it's an insensitive turbo capitalist, is that love is a part of the equation that matters. And uh, uh, I really had the huge fun in actually embodying and enacting this character. Yeah, it sounds like a little bit like Kissinger. <laughs> so what? Yeah. Also, also, the face is uh, a little similar, without beard. 
<laughs> no, I'm much more handsome than Kissinger. Come on. That is correct. Oh, there, you, you're a, you're a beautiful man, sir. Well, th that that is uh, well, that's great. And of course, it is amazing to all of us who um, met you when you were, of course, already deeply passionate as, as we are about Latin and about speaking it. But seeing you go from a very a very good state to just surpassing me and uh, so many other people in so many ways and your ability to recite and memorize and and perform in ways I could only uh, dream of brings me personally so much joy and I know it does to Stefano Marina as well and everybody who's gotten to enjoy your meteoric rise to this incredible look at you you're you're a cloud in the sky shouting at Medea it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> meteoric anyway um so Marina you had to do a lot as the title yeah. character and also sing yeah everything i mean you're obviously and there's a very good balance between the three uh, actors on stage and how much you actually have to do in the hour and a half play but what was it like the uh the re remembering all of the the lines learning them the process of, of acting, of creating dramatic action on, on the stage and, and performing to create the incredible result that we have, thankfully, videos up on the Urumak channel. What was all that like? Tell us. So there was an easy part and a difficult part. The easy part was memorizing the lines and the meter because I like memorizing. It's not a big problem for me. And uh, when he washed the dishes or when I washed the dishes or when I cooked, or when he cooked, so we just um, run, we run, we say to run lines, we just run lines and we were F um, together all the time. So we could always um, uh, practice. So that was, that was not a problem. More difficult was it to actually play the part of Medea because on one hand, um, some parts for me were quite easy. Let's say the songs, not the technical parts so or not the voice part, just the... Um, the other part, the acting part, because I really recognize myself in Medea, especially in the first song, which is very melancholic. And I think maybe if I were in her, her position, I would have done the same, maybe. So that was not that difficult, but it was quite difficult to play Medea in other parts because, because Stephanus Medea is not um um omnino um mean no. at all no not at all not mm, completely. completely mean so if i was the media of Euripides or seneca i would just just put my whole meany meanness meanness no mean mean yeah boosheit yeah meanness it. meanness cruelty wickedness cruelty, yes but there was a balance because she did. She is not a good person. She did kill. She did kill her brother. Yeah, she did kill some people. But she doesn't want to kill in, if not necessary, in this opera. So she is um, very strong, but not extremely mean. So that was not that easy. And it was not that easy because I'm a nice person. <laughs> I'm a good person. <laughs> yes, I'm it's a... true. <laughs> That's true. I'm a good person. <laughs> Better than <you. laughs> um, So it was not that easy to play that power to be. I'm quiet. I'm quiet. I don't speak a loud voice to, to do that power and to know where to put my hands. That's the, that's the, that's the sound. That's the sound. You have some sound? open mic. Uh, it's not mine, right? Uh, oh. Now? I don't know. Maybe it's the other one. It, it seems to be there. But uh, go, go ahead, uh, continue. Uh, so, in that, we uh, luckily we had um, a director, um, Tito Vittori, who is a who, ah, yeah, no. Okay, yes, it was yeah, Gabriela. Who, who helped us, of course, uh, how to play and how to to do the the mimic, how to to do the gestures, how to walk, how to how to move. What was very difficult to me. It's always difficult because I love acting, but I'm not a professional. Also, a difficult part was in the songs was the technical part because I have some problems with my voice, so I could not always do it as 
well as I would have liked to. Um, yeah. That is so difficult because it's long. It's an hour and a half, and you have to sing not just one time. And those are are potential. Well, they could be very different things to do. And you have to emote. You have to be sad. You have to, like all that. Yeah. I mean, it, that is. I mean, when I saw all you three pulling this off and doing it so well, I'm like, where the hell did this come from? How did you do the that? All of you, and certainly you, especially Marina, be, doing the having the the burden. And certainly the honor of the, the starring role. I mean, it, it came through so well from every song and, and every performance. So uh, we who got to see it, we can only thank you for for uh, for bringing that that character to life in such a, a meaningful way and a relatable way, which is actually something I wanted to ask you about, really? uh, Stefano, because this is um, you composed as you you say this is a tragedy written in the ancient Latin of language using the ancient metrical style using the mythology of all these things, but it is a modern play. What is it that uh, that you mean by that? How did you how did you do that? Well, uh, how did I do that? Um, or what makes it a modern play? Why is this? Uh, why, even though they're ancient characters and mythology, because, uh, for example, we can read ancient plays and they're not necessarily that relatable to our modern world. But like Andrea was talking about when it comes to, you know, the global marketplace and things like that, that's a modern element. What other elements make it a modern and potentially relatable work to our day and age? Well, I basically, uh, I basically uh, took the, um, the original story by Euripides, by Seneca. I, so to say, observed and analyzed the story and the structure of the plot and the problematics, uh, the questions, the social question, the political question, uh, and the personal questions that uh, were um, uh, um, brought, um, that were um, sollevate. Oh, uh, the raised. Were, ah. Ra raised. Raised. That were raised by the, by the story. And I ask how would a modern character, a modern man, a modern woman, a modern witch, why not, reason with the same problematics in the same situation. So for example, a king, how would he reason in this situation? Uh, a king, which for me, as a modern writer or as a modern reader of an ancient myth, for me, it's not simply a king. He's a manager. He has to be a manager and a leader. So for me, from my uh, 21st century mind, the king crown, it can be, he can be also a president. Uh, the, the kingly nature doesn't matter. It can be a manager of a, of a, gay, of a great firm or a, a, an important man of a great firm how will the uh, how will the reason i also uh, this is something andrea knows i also inspired myself uh, for crown to uh, the best closer of manhattan <laughs> to <laughs> andrea the who are you specter, the great harvest, harvest to the great harvest specter from uh, from suits from suits the the series uh, so he's basically a closer so uh, he sees a problematic and has andrea um, very said very well explained very well uh, he finds the the most um, the most good the the the, the best uh, the best solutions to the problems going on. Um, and of course, there is this capitalistic and uh, economic viewpoint, which a modern manager uh, could say. So you have this witch, you have this uh, throne in Corinth. Why fight? We can create a great empire. And secondly, and secondly, the problem between Jason and Medea. This is something modern. I asked myself, why does Jason lose 
his interest in Medea. Mm. Um, Euripides Seneca, uh, as ancient man, could say, well, he's simply, he's simply uh, looking for a throne, looking for a kingly future. Uh, for me, as a modern as a modern man, this doesn't. This is this is not enough. There is something deeper. This is something uh, more obscure in his soul. He mm. is the unique man. Is the unique hero who has a wife who is more powerful than himself. And this is a, a, a goddamn problem uh, <laughs> for a, a patriarchal society, but also for our modern society in which the, the two parts of a couple should be or must be uh, at the same level. So he's not simply greedy for a throne. He's also looking for a new situation in which he can be the hero, the true hero, uh, the powerful part. And this is something which he, uh, which tortures him profoundly, deeply in his soul. And Medea knows it, but she cannot do, can't do anything to solve this. Mm. Uh, I try. She tries. She tries to convince him that in her soul, in her mind, it doesn't matter that he is less, so to say, powerful than her yeah. because she is a witch. Yeah. And she tries to explain what she sees in this normal man and what she loves in normal man. And of course, I, I won't say it because I, want to, I don't want to spoil her, but, uh, but he is simply not capable to understand mm. because he thinks in the square, in the, in the, yes, in the framework of his way of uh, seeing the world, of his um, Weltanschauung in which you have the roles, the primary roles, the secondary roles, and these roles are rules, which must be respected. Mm. So he cannot basically understand Medea's love for him. Mm. Well, that, that's really well explained. And uh, thank you. That, that helps a lot. And I, I think that'll captivate people. That's one of those things, too, that one notices in the simple tellings of most of the ancient myths, like, oh, and then, then this happened, and there isn't an explanation. I'm reminded of, uh, is it uh, Theseus, Theseus and, um, who, did he, who did he leave on, um, on Naxos? Ariadne. Uh, thank you, Ariadne. And, uh, <laughs> and like, why, why, did, why did he do that? It's just because he just, he just cut, he's this great hero, and then he just comes off as, um, uh, you know, a total jerk for having abandoned the girl who ended up getting him and all the other Athenians out alive. Of course, she ends up having a happier ending with uh, Dionysus in the sky. But it's um, but that's the the kind of treatment that I would want in a myth, myth like this, an ancient myth, to give it a kind of contextualization that makes it more real, makes it more yeah. understandable, makes it more like, why the heck did this happen? And and thankfully you. You've supplied that, and uh, people can go watch the play to find out now, and they can, without sp uh, getting uh, any spoilers from us uh, here. Or, of course, you can wait for your copy to arrive. If I can add something about the characters. Need... Please. Sorry, sorry, Andrea. Yeah, go ahead, Francesco. Francesco, go on. Just a thing. Uh, on stage, we have uh, only uh, three actors and mainly three parts, but uh, there, there are also the, the demons played by Stefano, and uh, the slave of Medea played by Marina. In the comic, we had the opportunity to change the, the actors <laughs> in a way, and um, we leave the opportunity to, to some uh, lucky baker to, to buy uh, the role of the, um, of the slave. And this is a page with the actual baker, the reader, who, who, give, who gave the, his face to, to this role. So this is one of our, uh, our readers. It was um, already a reader of Origines Pictae, and uh, now his face is uh, the face of the slave of Medea. And there are also, awesome. uh, in, um, in some uh, panels, in some pages, uh, uh, other bakers, uh, who had uh, choose to, to appear as a 
secondary character. It's uh, my father, for, for example. <laughs> My oh, father. Yes. Great. <laughs> also your father. Good to see Dimitri. Good. Hi, father. He's Hi, there. Dimitri. <laughs> Privet. Privet, Dimitri. <laughs> well, that's great. And uh, you can't, uh, oh gosh, can't wait to, to have this. Do I have to wait till December? Uh, one other thing that will become available at some, some point after the end of the, the Kickstarter is going to be a uh, Scuola. Uh, artis metricae mm -hmm. that is a uh, lesson at least a lesson if not more than one lesson of uh the metrical arts that sounds very strange what a, what's a better way to say that in english of latin meter thank you that sounds better uh <laughs> <laughs> how to recite it and even how to compose it uh could you tell a little bit um stefan marina who will be leading this and audience people out there you you couldn't have better teachers of Latin meter because both Marina and Stefano are poets, very accomplished poets, obviously, in the Latin language um, and uh, how to write meter. And for, I want to ask you two questions. What will you teach? And then I want you to tell us why we should care, not just to read, but how to write poetry in Latin. Yeah, I will we'll just teach some meter. It, it depends on um, on how much time we will have and on who the um, participants will be. So it depends what we will do. But I think um, I think it would be nice to teach some um, iambics, iambic trimeter first. You said also other meters, like examiners. That, that depends on I time. It, on the. Um... I'm not sure we'll have the time. So it really depends on how much time we'll have. So I think we will teach um, the structure of the iambic trimeter, right? And yes. how to recite it, how to read it, so that the people can actually have their copy and read it aloud uh, correctly. Yes, this is the most important part, the, the, the iambic trimeter, because the, the tragedy is actually written in iambic trimeters. Uh, also, there is a part where uh, there is an exorcism, which is written in galliambic verses yeah. and and well if we will have time we'll have time uh we can also teach this kind of meter to to be read and yes but but the, like, the most um, important part is yeah. the iambic trim yes, as marina said gallium is um the meter of catalos um 63 super alta mm. vectu satis scalari rate maria yeah and who is it so this and... <laughs> <Ida>. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I also, that's my vote too, because I understand hexameter and elegiac couplets and uh, hand a syllable well enough. They're much more common. I would love to learn uh, trimeter. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, it's really fun. It's really beautiful. Good. Well, why should any of us care? Like it's, we, you know, the, th the th well, all of us here, but certainly uh, Andrea, Marina, Stefo and I are, are strongly in favor of when recitation, utilizing the phonemic vowel lengths of Latin and observing the syllable lengths because mm -hmm. it allows us to access the poetry. Even yeah. if we get that far, why should we bother learning how to even write? Even if we do it badly, even if we don't even write a full poem, why, Stefano, should we learn to write any lines in meter in Latin? Why do that? Because, it's, because it is a way to express one's thoughts in a very powerful form. Because it shapes our minds uh, and the content of our minds. You can write something very elegant in prose, and of course you have, you should know meter, Latin, Latin meter also for prose. We have the clausulae right. in Cicero. Uh, so metrics here is uh, most important also for prose, but speaking about poetry, the, um, the capability, the ability to write a sentence, uh, a thought of yours in a form which is a perfect hexameter, a perfect trimeter or couple of trimeters or in a, uh, in a distic, in, a, in an elegiac distich is something which uh, brings you to uh, a result which is the perfect shape of your thought. And also, right. it urges you to better understand the structure of the language and, better and, and brings you to a better understanding of the, uh, of the rhythmic 
and grammatical and syntactical uh, knowledge yeah. of a language. And also, it enriches your vocabulary. Because you, you have to put a word which means, I don't know, um, window or table in a verse. Well, you may know the word, one word for that thing, uh, for the window or for the table or for the, I don't know, the door. Uh, and, and you always say porta. Mm. Right. But then you have to write a trimeter or, or you have to write an hexameter. And not always porta is fitting for this rhythm. So uh, to write verses uh, hugely increases your, uh, your lexicon, your vocabulary, because you are forced to find synonyms or quasi synonyms uh, for uh, for the correct for 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 the correct meter so you can you can be urged to learn not only porta but also uh, forest or ostium and etc so uh, it has uh, many many uses uh, and many utilities for uh, for the latin learner who really wants to learn Latin. Mm. Um, also, vocalic quantity is hugely important for Latin. I have, I know colleagues of mine uh, in my school in, who utterly forbid mm -hmm. their students yeah. to write vocalic quantities on the vowels. To write and to pronounce them, right? And to pronounce them. Yes. They forbid them to do it. Usually, are the teachers are the teachers which take my classes in the in the following years. Yeah. <laughs> so it's oh, basically no. as if you uh, teach Italian learners to say tuta instead of tutta, or to yeah. say casa instead of cassa. Uh, yeah. It's the same or thing. Words so, uh, anno instead of anno. Bravo. Or Anno, <laughs> so imagine an Itali a teacher of Italian language who does this. Well, in Latin and Greek, this is normal. Mm -hmm. So uh, the importance of Latin and Greek metrics is that we have to use, we have to learn, really learn we have these languages. And in the way we usually do, we don't. Because mm -hmm. we actually lose an important, a huge... Uh, uh, a basic part of the language. Yes. Yeah. And also, yeah. if I may, you made, you, made, you, you made a comparison with Italian, no? But the point is, since there are tons of uh, native speakers of Italian, English, etc., okay, all accents are welcome. I mean, there are all, all us foreigners, we can ignore substantial part of phonetics and still be understood. But Latin is a language that we are trying to, no, as a collective effort, reconstruct and reenact and to give back you know, to, to the world of culture, to, to, to the society in general. So this effort, this effort at taking seriously the way that it was pronounced is just not a sterile uh, academic you know, uh, thing that we do because we like. It's actually a, a way to, reconstruct, uh, to, to restitute, to, to give back ancient voices to contemporary ears. So, this is why it's important. This is why we, as Italians, Luke is an American, we try to mimic the reconstructed version of that accent that changes over time, changes in different places, of course. Uh, this is because we don't have actually people from, uh, I don't know, from Athens speaking Greek uh, uh, that, that uh, are alive today and that they, they can tell us how it was spoken in third century. So this is the point. Since we don't have natives from that period, it's important that we try to give these voices back. Mm. Beautifully spoken. Marina, do also, you have any... Oh, go ahead, Stefano. Also, if a very short thing. Uh, the most important part in reading, in writing uh, Latin matter today is that, as, Andrew, as uh, Andrea said, um, we, we are not doing something academical, something sterile and academical. Yeah, and art, yeah. art yeah. is the sole, is the unique thing which can save us from academy. Because mm. if something is beautiful, if something is, if something is scientific, you can question it. But if something is beautiful and people love to watch it, listen to it, um, read it, you cannot question it. So mm. if we can 
uh, give back to Western society, let him through an artistic way, there no, there's no academy which can stop us. That's because, for sure. Because people like it. And where people like it, science and academy uh, are basically neutered. <laughs> neutered <alive. laughs> also, <laughs> neutered um, alive. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's beautiful in here, and we're still enjoying but watching. Science, uh, but of course, science can help can help us in this reconstruction. Oh yeah, yeah. They, they like, could... I'm not speaking against science, of course. No, no, academy, no, no, yeah. against the no, academy, no. of course. But I, but I enjoyed the the vim with which you express that. <laughs> it was very beautifully said, and uh, we're all enjoying looking, seeing the beauty of Gabriele's yeah. illustration before our very eyes. This whole hour, what a joy. Uh, Marina, as a poetria, as a poet your, yourself too, why do you uh, think that students and teachers of Latin or just people who want to enjoy the language should learn to write poetry? Even if they don't write long poems, just, just write a little bit. Why should we learn to do that? To write, yeah, I, I would say to, um, to appreciate to appreciate the artwork of the poets more. So... Mm. If you already, of course, if you already know meter, what is very important, as we said, it's a further step to even better understand the the style or why an author wrote this or this or that. Hmm. Um, yes, hmm. because I think the the other other thing Stefano already already said. This comes to my mind because, um, of course. Um, from the time I write Latin poetry, it's from end of 2016. I started writing Latin poetry then. I can better, I feel more connected to the authors too. So when I read something by Ovid, for example, I say, ah, he put that word here because the other one wouldn't have worked. Ah, yes, he this, did is, that. Very, this is, is very, very true funny. and beautiful. So I feel very connected to, to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, I get you. I, I know. I know why you do. Why you use yeah. this word here? Yeah. Right. Oh, why did you use this? Ah, too for Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why did you use the other one? Or why do you do that? Um, but of course, the writing poetry is more is a further step. It's the first thing is to 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 try and read and to to read. Yes, not read. Be afraid uh, of, yes, uh, to read. Reading is the is the most important skill because then when you are read, you can also write. But you have to read uh, a ton, a lot, a lot of poets and verses to yeah. write well. Yeah. Uh, mm. so the main focus is the reading, and the writing is a is a good um, is a good uh, so to say treat. Mm -hmm. uh, treat, yeah, treat. treat. Good. It's a... yes. <laughs> well, you, everyone is out there has heard it. Hopefully, uh, those uh, people, if you haven't considered uh, backing yet the Kickstarter at the level which gets you the class from Stefano and Marina, how to how to understand and even how to write a bit of verse, especially trimeter, that you should definitely consider it. The link is in the description. Francesco, could you bring up the PDF again? Because uh, sure. what what um, uh, you've all s uh, said, Andrea and Marina and Stefano, you just really hit on the pedagogy. And that's actually something that I didn't even really bring up. And yet it's actually always in the back of my mind that here we have the opportunity from this book to to learn uh, a lot. I think I mentioned a little bit, but one of the great things about it is that you can get this book either. You have the uh, I la version inglese. You have the English version, right, Francesco? Uh, um, just um, give, I guess this is the English Italian version. version. Yeah, yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, good. Excellent. Because can you show us uh, for a second the page before with the or or next, whichever one. Then. Try yeah, to show us the, the two pages. Uh, yeah, because uh, if you've been looking, audience, um, just a minute. Um, you will have noticed that there are some pages with with text, and that is a complete translation of the page. The first thing is that the entire tragedy, the whole play, every word of it, even to the Georgian, <laughs> is in is actually in the. Um, uh, in the comic book and in, in the graphic novel, plus a full translation, either in Italian or in English. You can choose your version um, when you uh, when you back the the Kickstarter, which is great. So, and that is hugely important pedagogically to have that because that way we can um, 
if we uh, you know, the, we don't we're not all masters of Latin, but oh, thank you, this is great. So here on the right we have the whole scene, and on the left um, the translation into English or Italian, if you want that version. This is the Italian format. version, but the English version uh, will be the, the same. Yeah, we get the idea though. Thank you. This is actually what I wanted to show everyone so that you could see that. Hey, if you don't know Latin, don't worry. We have the translation for you right here, which I think is fantastic, and and uh, that adds the pedagogical value, um, and and really, and this is something that I hope, just like Origine Spiktai, that ends up in Latin classrooms around the world. Because <laughs> why not? Why not have a modern work of Latin literature uh, so faithful to everything that is beautiful and important about ancient literature of the Latin language from classical literature? And yet, fully modernized both in visual style as well as in the in the literary style, on the bookshelves and in classrooms around the world. That's how I feel about it. Um, everyone, thank you so much for being here, uh, Francesco. Anything else that um, I didn't mention that we ought to have mentioned to our audience today? No, I think uh, we said already what to say. Now, if and I may, if I may, I would like to add something about Gabriele and Francesco. Please. Because, uh, uh, and in general, also on the way we have met. First of all, I met Francesco, I had the luck of meeting Francesco at uh, uh, the Grego Ladino Vivo meeting uh, in Florence, I think in 2021. Uh, off to Gabriele, because you have 20, uh, there is a huge 22. noise in your mic. Um, 2022. Okay. And uh, from this meeting, actually, everything, I guess, started thanks to the huge initiative that Francesco had as an entrepreneur or, a, or as a self-employed <laughs> professional. And I have to say that the job that Gabriele and Francesco did, I really didn't participate much in it because of work and other commitment I have, but through the WhatsApp group that lasted for a few weeks and still lasts, I could see how professional and amazingly hardworking these two are. So I really want to say thank yeah. you because thank you really you. did an amazing job and you really are two amazing professionals. And this yeah, thank you had very to much. be said. And also, guys, that you would like to participate in Latin in, in the Latin world, go to conventions because this where yes. this is where the magic happens. This is where connections are created, and this is where serendipity happens. And you can get Absolutely. amazing things like this comic uh, book. The um, the conventiculum uh, we met was in October 2022. It was my first right. conventiculum. Uh, I I've never been in a group like that um, and I wasn't thinking about doing something in Latin I, I was just there to learn and then um, two weeks later uh, I met uh, Rossano uh, a boy who was a great spe uh, Latin speaker who was in uh, at the conventiculum uh, we were at Luca Comics the greatest Italian uh, comic um, fair and he said to me, why don't we do a comic in Latin? Why not? And from that, everything started. We made Origin Spicta, and uh, now we are making uh, Medea Daimones. Then, uh, yes, we have to go to the Conventicula at Andrea. We have to found uh, Circulus Latinus. <laughs> Yeah, Francesco Yama, wants to Yama, Yama, found us here a uh, circle ah, in Rome. Is that right? Tempo yeah, says. yeah, Tempo please. Says. Because because there isn't one. Gratis. There is no, you're right. Wants, uh, Latin that, circle in Rome. Well, there's oh, no one wow. better, Francesco. In Rome. So. We can uh, I, I, I tried to, to search for it, and uh, there isn't anyone. Mm. No. Wow. And, and cool. I want to, to better speak. So cool. I have to join like someone. Yamos. Let's do it's it. So, so great, someone who yeah. can organize. People from the Rome area out there, if you're listening, write in the comments if you want to join this circle. That's that right. Francesco will write. <laughs> that's that's right. Good. Oh, good. Well, we could have. We could even. We'll do a definitely a live stream when that's up and running too to get the word out. Well, anche Gabriele voglio ringraziarti di nuovo per aver fatto questo disegno bellissimo che stiamo guardando adesso. Uh, veramente fantastico voglio ecco ti faccio non muto di nuovo solo per uh, um, if you want to say anything else uh, Gabriele about, uh, about this incredible work uh, you can but I just want to thank you for for doing the whole book of course your illustrations without you the whole thing doesn't work so uh, thank you for doing that and thank, thank you, you so also much. for illustrating for us today 
Thank you, Luke. Thank you very Thank much. You and uh, grazie ragazzi, grazie a tutti uh, per, uh, per uh, esserci stato, esserci stati mm. oggi, scusate, ho parlato in inglese tutto il tempo, ora mi scordo come com 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 si parla questa lingua, ecco. Così si parla, come fai tu adesso, come, come bravo. Parla, come <ride> grazie mille, eh, non vedo l'ora di avere il, il libro, ecco, uh, proprio qua. Uh, ma anche dalle mie mani, non, non vedo l'ora mm -hmm. di, di leggerlo dal vivo. Grazie mille. Grazie a te. Grazie a Somnibus Bobis.